day we're out here again in the front garden uh it's time to bring some of these um sweet potatoes back again and get them out of the other beds uh, i do like to let them grow because they help to feed the tubers that are growing underneath the main part of the plant there but we do need to make some space here we got some strawberries and some blueberries to plant in this bed right here so it's time to trim back now, a few weeks ago i'd actually offered up some rooted cuttings actually some roots on vines that come out of these beds previously to the neighbors but unfortunately no one got back to me within about two weeks so i ended up composting all of those and of course the minute i did someone wrote me and said hey can I get some of those cuttings so I'm actually going to make some new cuttings today from these vines that I take out and I'm hoping as I dig through too that I might find some vines that are already rooted in places that I can simply pull out pot up for them and give them right away so I don't have to actually spend a couple days or a week rooting them up on my own so we'll dig through these and we'll take a look so the first thing I'm going to do is basically start at the ends that are encroaching on this bed and, and you can tug gently and see they have not yet rooted on their own yet so we'll just kind of cut these back on mass here and we can always use some of these for for slips to root up what i may do is actually put them in pots and uh root them up properly uh i have done them in water before and it's been fine they're actually quite vigorous uh roots uh that grow on these vines so we'll we'll do a little bit of both ways but within a week or so i should have plenty of cuttings for my neighbor and maybe a few others will ask in the meantime. Well, as you can see here, I've got enough sweet potato vine cuttings to propagate an entire greenhouse, should I want to. So we'll just take a few of these vines. Um, they're all pretty vigorous. And we'll do maybe four to six, maybe even eight in water. And then we'll do another six to eight in pots and see which ones take off first. The rest then we'll simply compost up and return them back into the garden as soil. So um, as you saw, I had more than enough to choose from uh, of all those sweet potato vines. So uh, I just picked some of the most vigorous ones, the biggest ones I can find. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut right below a node, like that, and then we'll strip off the side leaf, leaving the leaf on top, and then we'll do the same thing up here. So we'll kind of have a node at the bottom and a node at the top, and we're just gonna just put those right down into soil and repeat the process over and over. So let's say, uh, let's see, I should have a node now. I think I'm gonna actually take that leaf off because it probably will cause him to uh, transpire a little too much water there so let's do it again here again we got a node on the bottom and we'll take the leaf off at the top put that in and we'll just see how these goes now I'm also gonna do the same thing I'm gonna put them in this jar of water over here uh, I like doing it in clear bottles uh, it does have some problems with algae growth but I find that it's actually much easier to see the the root progress on there which is exactly what you want to see you want to see when things have started to root and just a lot clearer than putting things in soil where it's hidden from view. Uh, I think we'll do that same thing there. Now I'm not worried too much about this because frankly I have seen how well these vines root just simply lying on the ground. So I'm pretty sure that no matter uh, how I go about this we're going to get some decent cuttings to hand on to our neighbors. So that's everything for now. I think we got plenty to get us started and share with our neighbors here. As uh, as you saw, I, any moment I can run out and grab some more to start. So uh, it will always be easy if someone else comes along and asks. It'll be a little interesting here. I was a little mistaken about whether I needed to take the cutting above the node or below the leaf node. I, so I did a little bit of both and we'll see which one returns the best results. As you can see here, I've got some in water in a clear jar here and I've got some in soil over here. We'll see which ones take off more quickly. Uh, it's been a rough time on the potting bench. We've had uh, plus 100 degree heat for the last week. I actually had to put up my little umbrella over the potting bench to shade some of the ceilings as they were getting pretty whacked, even with regular watering during the day. But hopefully it's going to get a little warmer this weekend, but then maybe, fingers crossed, we'll see a cooling trend as we head into next week and finally begin what little fall we normally get here in Southern California. Until next time, you can always find out more about In the Garden and A Gardener's Notebook on the website, douglaselwelch.com. There you'll find links to A Gardener's Notebook as well as everything else that I do, including career opportunities, careers in the media, technology IQ, 
and my word, my eclectic personal blog. Again, DouglasEWelch.com. Until next time, keep on making food and keep digging.